Once you're able to build and add to that, now you can come to the negotiation table and then negotiate for what you deserve. And I told him that, look, when it comes to working for somebody, most often than not, you're going to be underpaid. Most often than not, you're going to be sometimes seriously underpaid. I've been underpaid several times. That in my professional career, I would say I probably was underpaid 70% of the time. There was a time that I felt overpaid. Probably 10% of the time, I felt I was really overpaid. Then there was another time that I felt, okay, this is okay, this is kind of fair, this is kind of okay. Awesome. What do you do if you are unemployed and the ideal opportunity doesn't come along? What do you do? You, you're sitting at home, you're waiting for an opportunity. The ideal opportunity that you want, that, that nice thing that you've courted or, or, or you know, come up with in your brain, that nice opportunity, that cushy office job, that cushy role is not coming up. What, what do you do? That is what this video is all about. I spoke to, um, or actually, someone that, uh, a young person that I mentor spoke to me uh, this past week. And based on the discussion that I had with him, I just felt compelled to do this video. So this is a young man who's finished university, finished college, whichever you want to call it. And uh, he's been looking for a job for two years, two years plus now. And he's not found the job yet. And I'll put found in quotes. So I, I was just, he, he called me the other day out of the blue. I've not, I had not spoken to him for quite a while, maybe a couple of months. So my first inkling was, hey, how, 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 what are you doing now? Where, where are you working? He said, hello, say, I'm not working. I, I said, well, how come? I, I said, I'm, I, because I've, I said, look, I have coached you uh, to the best of my ability. And there are a lot of people that have coached just like you that are doing fantastically well in, in, in their newfound jobs. And some of, of them are even doing their own businesses, so running their own businesses. So how come you are an outlier? He said, oh, um, I said, okay, is it because you are not getting interviews? Because I told him, if you can't get yourself an interview, I can coach you that you will get the job. If you get the interview, I can guarantee you 100% you will get the job. He said, sir, it's not about that. I said, what, what is it? He said, oh, I keep getting opportunities that are a little bit farther away from where I live or the pay is not good. I said, repeat that again. He said, I, I keep, I said, how many of them have you gotten so far? I said, oh, I probably may count about five or six in the past uh, couple of weeks to a few months. He said, I, I applied for them and they, they called me and da, da, da. But I noticed that the location is a little bit out of range for me or, or the, 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 the salary where they pegged it, you know, it's not what, what, what I deserve. I said, whoa, you haven't really listened or you haven't really been a good student of my mentorship. You haven't really been a good protege. That's that I didn't tell him precisely. I mean, I didn't tell him outwardly though, but I didn't want to I didn't want to hurt his feelings, you know, because he came out very genuinely and openly, right? He was very honest. So I wanted to reward his honesty. But <laughs> at the end of the call, he realized he realized that I wasn't mincing words at all. Now, what do you do if you are in such a situation? Because he told me that most of his friends are in the same boat. They get opportunities that are way out of scope or the deal is not very good. They don't get what they deserve. I said, look, that is stupid. That is crazy. That's exactly what I said. I said, that is crazy. I said, okay. So you get the opportunity and you say you want X and Y pay. Okay. What have you proven to that employer to get that level of pay? You first of all haven't even proven yourself to them. And then you are expecting to be paid a gazillion or a billion. I don't even know what it is that you want. 
So, I said, so this was my, my conversation. So I went something like this. That look, you are staying at home. Are you making any income at all? He said, no. Um, but, but say, if I go, uh, all the, the amount of money they give me will, will just be consumed by the transportation costs. I say, okay, if this conversation is even getting more interesting. So you staying at home, you're getting zero anyway, isn't it? He said, yes, you're getting zero. But I don't want to go and waste my energy just to get zero. I said, okay, I understand. Okay, you're staying at home, you're getting zero. Number two, you're staying at home, whatever you learned in, in college that you finished two years ago is getting stale, isn't it? He said, yes. Um... Would you want the opportunity somewhere? Just if somebody gave you an opportunity close by your house, say, come and do a free internship and you get to use your skill, will you consider doing that? He said, oh, yeah, yeah, I will, I will do that. I said, okay, why would you do that? He said, oh, then I get some experience. I said, okay. So you, you want to get experience, let's say, for, I said, for how long? He said, oh, maybe, maybe up to three months I can do that. Then I get some really good experience. Then I can tell people that, you know, I have I've done this and that and that and that. I say, wow, wow, wow. Now we are talking. So you are prepared to end zero to get experience. That is relevant, isn't it? He said, yes. Okay. Now let's do the math. You get the work. The work that you want to, 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 to do that is far away. Let, but, so I ask him, is it in another city or another town? He said, no, it's just within the same city, but it's a bit far off. Okay, so I said the job that they, they 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 wanted you to do or the opportunity was this something that was really good that could help your career develop? He said yes. Was this something that could build your experience or introduce you to to additional skill or at at uh, at the least enhance your current skills? Is this something that in that in that range in that area? He said yes. I said okay. So I said, okay, now, let's compare that with the scenario that I just described. How different is that from you volunteering or working for free in a company that is closer by you for 90 days? And actually, getting... The work that is a little bit far off, that probably potentially you would expend all your salary on transportation for 90 days. How different is that? Because in each case, you you end up earning zero anyway. So you earn zero to get the experience you want in the first instance that I described whereby you work for free for the organization and uh, as an intern and then you get some juicy work experience. And then in the second instance, you earn money, but you spend all of it traveling to get the experience that you wanted. How different is that? And he was looking at me. He said, oh, said, actually, thinking about it that way, there is no difference. I said, there you go. <laughs> there you go. You see, many people get stuck thinking the they have, I would what I call entitlement mindset. They think, oh, once I have finished college, they are supposed to pay me this. Once I finish college, I am supposed to get that. Who told you you are supposed to get anything? You are not supposed to get nothing. You only get what you negotiate for. And if the chips that you are bringing to the table carry no weight, you have very little leverage in your negotiation. So what you have to do is that you have to keep increasing the volume and the weight of your chips. That the chips are things that you have in control over. So your skill set, your experience, you have to keep increasing that, increase that weight, add to it, add to it, add to it. Once you're able to build and add to that, now you can come to the negotiation table and then negotiate for what you deserve. And I told him that, look, when it comes to working for somebody, most often than not, you're going to be underpaid. Most often than not, you're going to be sometimes seriously underpaid. I've been underpaid several times. That in my 
professional career, I would say I probably was underpaid 70% of the time. There was a time that I felt overpaid, probably 10% of the time. I felt I was really overpaid. Then there was another time that I felt, okay, this is okay. This is kind of fair. This is kind of okay. So in terms of you're going to get underpaid more often. And then at a point in time, you may get overpaid. Right? And then at a certain point in time, you will feel that, okay, you are properly being paid. So forget about all those kind of things. And then think about what am I doing to enhance my value? You sitting at home, waiting for the best opportunity. The best opportunity may never happen. But your best opportunity may be hidden in that first opportunity that you don't like. Maybe you stepping out to do that kind of work, right? That you hit the commute or you hit the salary. Maybe that opportunity, as you get in there and you begin to work, you may work with a work colleague who sees your value, who sees your work ethic. You may not even get a promotion in that organization. But you may work with a team of people who maybe at some point in time, one of them will leave or two of them will leave, go start something on their own or go work for a different organization. And then they say, oh, when I was working at this company, there was this young guy, this young lady who was very good. I think we need him on board or we need her on board. Let's bring her on board. That may be that ideal opportunity. So in fact, your ideal opportunity is hidden in and not so ideal or not so, uh, 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 what do you call it, uh, not so sexy opportunity. Let me put it that way, right? Not so fantastic, not so glamorous opportunity. It, so it's like gold. Gold is always hidden in mud or dust. It's hidden. They have to, they have to you have to, you know, clear things up to be able to find the gold. So your ideal opportunity may be hidden in the dust of a not so ideal opportunity and you have to do the digging and part of the digging is look if you are starting your career and you are thinking about money you're already a loser you are already a loser because you will not get it <laughs> and and if you've completed school and for some reason maybe by the, the country that you live in their own unemployment rate is so high uh you youth unemployment rate is at uh, it's probably at an all-time high and that kind of thing and you keep passing opportunities like that then you're going to be waiting for a long time because by the time the economy resets guess what's going to happen you have no experience your degree has now become stale so they are likely to employ newer graduates who will take less than you are so if that is your plight, you have, you have a game on your hand and that game is not pretty. I remember I shared this story a while back and I'll, I'll share it again. That I, I saw a, um, a discussion on Twitter the other day about uh, two friends who had finished university. One of them had done um, some programming, uh, some uh, course in, I think, an IT-related field, I think a, a bachelor's in information technology, and had gone ahead to uh, further his education to even do a master's. And they couldn't find work. And I think they were in Nigeria. They couldn't find work. So they ended up working with the telecom company, and they were doing um, inbound uh, inbound uh, what do you call it uh, customer service right so it's, it's, it's like you know telephone you know uh t t tele sales and you know tele customer care and that kind of thing so their job is they, they just pick the phone and respond to customer complaints all day long so nothing no career uh, prospects you just pick the phone answer the customer complaint or look uh, use certain tools and software to be able to uh, listen in on what people are saying on social media about the their, their company's services and, and stuff like that and then just respond that was all there wasn't any value addition they had done it for two years and when they did it for two years one of them said i've had enough man i need i need to risk it and i need to find something meaningful so he found an organization and jumped 
And the pay was not good when he was jumping. It was like whatever he was going to make extra was going to be made up. He was going to utilize that in transportation anyway because it was going to be a bit farther out than where he was living. Now, he decided to go and he started to push, I mean, pull his colleague, whom he thought was a very smart guy. So, look, join me. There's this opening here. I want you to join me, and, and I think we'll make a decent uh, uh, career out of ourselves than staying in this rut of, of no career prospect for two years plus. This other friend didn't see the light in it. He said, look, look, man, I, I can't go, man. Uh, the, the, the distance is too far. It's like across the end of town. I, I can't do that. And then the... The additional money that I'm going to be making uh, is actually going to be is actually going to be eating into my salary. So if I was making, uh, let's say, a thousand dollars, I'm just throwing numbers out there. It's, that's that, I don't know how much it was, but I'm just just for context sake. So if the previous company was paying him, uh, uh, let's say, seven hundred, six hundred dollars in a dead end job, right? And then the, the the new one, which is out of town or on the outskirts of town was paying him say a thousand he was saying that the extra 300 that he was going to be making is all going to go into transportation costs and and more so he probably may even be losing out by going to that new company that was his argument that he was not going to leave and yet the job prospect the, his his opportunity to enhance himself in terms of career was so high they were going to employ him as a database analyst or something like that. Compare a database analyst job for an IT graduate with a customer care job in a comfortable, in what he felt was a comfort zone. But thank God for good friends. This friend just pestered him and pestered him and pestered him and even gave him a little bit of his own money to move. And he moved a few years down the road. That led him to work to, to get an offer. This IT grad, he got an offer from the largest fintech startup unicorn in Africa called Flutterwave. He got a, a job there, cushy job there. Amazing. So as he was even preparing to join Flutterwave, as he was he had given his notice and was waiting to get to Flutterwave, he got another great offer. This time from a US based university to come and work and study, he was to come and study as a PhD, uh, study for his PhD, and also do some kind of a graduate assistancy kind of thing to earn money. And he took, chose the latter though. He, so right now he's in the United States doing his PhD and working as a graduate assistant at the same time. If he hadn't left that, comfort zone, that organization, that customer care job, he would never have, would have found it. This, this new opening that literally has changed his life. So there you go. If you're unemployed and the ideal opportunity, you think ideal opportunity hasn't come, you probably may wait forever. It will never come. All right. So um, if you haven't already subscribed to my channel, do so right now so that anytime i post juicy content like this you'll be among the first to know about it and i want you to also click here on this same page i posted uh, i did a content a while ago um that i think will tie in very 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 well about how to notice dead end opportunities Right, how to quit at dead end opportunities, how to have that strength to quit at dead end opportunities. And I want you to watch that, it will be a fantastic addition to uh, your watching <laughs> enjoyment. If there's anything like that, anyway, see you later. Bye bye.